Hello, I'm the Star Trek one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just take the words straight out of my mouth and use them against me. No one can hear because it wasn't recording. Is it recording, Tom? <laughs> oh, you're such a dick. <laughs> Hang on, you're editing it. <laughs> it's all your fault. I'll just cut, cut, cut. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Untitled Trek Show. Still such an original name. <laughs> I, I, I really like it. Because uh, we were going to, we were talking ages ago about it being called something like Trek Talk. Yeah, well, that that was one of the original ideas we had, wasn't it? We were yeah. going to have it as Trek Talk, and that was going to be in the main episode for the main show. Then it was, let's spin it off to its own individual show. And then we said, what are we going to call it? And I think we just, didn't we jokingly say, Untitled Trek Show? That's original, ha ha. No, you just wrote <laughs> Untitled because it didn't have a title. You just did it. Yes, you're right. Yeah, you just wrote Untold Trek Show. I was like, I actually like that. We're not changing it. <laughs> Fair enough. But do you remember I found that list of Star Trek podcasts? Yeah. And there was one on there called Trek Talk. Yes, you did, didn't you? Yeah. And there was a few that we'd thought we'd come up with that were on the list. Like, oh, God, we're not being original anyway. Yeah, apparently we're not original, <laughs> so... <laughs> At least we are with this one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I am very surprised, to be fair, that you didn't open this with something like Mission Log. No, sorry, Captain's Log. Today I'm going to commit murder. I don't yeah. know who yet, but I feel like killing someone. Because that's right, that's the the um, the whole plot line <laughs> of this episode of Tuvix. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of a roller coaster. I, when I'd watched it the first couple of times years ago when it had come out, I think I, I I ended with a different opinion. Maybe I didn't even have really an opinion of it. But re-watching it now, critically, well, what, what I call critically, <laughs> our version of critical, <laughs> yeah. I really got a different feeling at the end of it. And actually, I really felt awkward. That end scene, we'll get there, but that end scene on the bridge, I was really uncomfortable and I felt sorry for him. And I was like, okay, you know so what? I don't like this. Let's just quickly jump back a bit there. Then. Accessing library computer data. For those of you that aren't following along, we are on Star Trek Voyager today. That was yeah. the episode series that you chose. And we are on season two, episode 24, with the self-titled episode, Two Vix. Two Vix, that's right. Um, and we'll do a very, very quick brief rundown of the episode for those of you that haven't got around to watching it yet. Tuvok and Neelix are on a planet. They're searching for a plant. They get beamed back. Dirty Kim does something wrong. They come back as a merged individual. Merged individual spends his then next few weeks living his life as this new individual on Voyager. People start to like him. Other people don't like him. And then good old hologram Doc decides, I finally worked out a way of uh, fixing this. Mm -hmm. and Tuvix doesn't want to die, Janeway commits murder, end of episode. Yep. That and it? we'll see you in two weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that is the brief gist of the whole episode. That is really yeah, kind of from the, the beginning to the end. Rundown, yeah. That is the most simple kind of rundown, but there is a lot to take And you're take blaming from Dirty this. Kim for it. Well, it, we'll get there in a minute, but I'm definitely blaming Dirty Kim for it. I wasn't really blaming anybody. Oh, I'm blaming Dirty Kim for it all the way. Oh, okay. 100% of the way. They were fucking around with the teleporter. Transporter, darling. Come on. Get the terminology transporter. right or we'll have lots of Trekkies want to kill us. Yes, finally. I would like to return your quote-unquote ultimate belt. I see. Do you have a receipt? Quote-unquote, sir? No, I do not have a receipt. I won it as a door prize at the Star Trek convention, although I find their choice of prize highly illogical, as the average Trekker has no use for a medium-sized belt. Oh, oh, a fat, sarcastic Star Trek fan. You must be a devil with the ladies. Oh, I call it a teleporter. It's I think a transporter. I, I think I've always called it a teleporter. <laughs> well, it's teleporting. It is, <laughs> it is doing that thing. Don't get me wrong, but get the goddamn name right. <laughs> Oh, I don't fucking care. <laughs> what are you I will cut Star you. Star Wars, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Galaxy Quest? <laughs> Galaxy Quest is great. It is one of the best films known to man, think... and it's for free on Pluto TV at the moment. What's Pluto TV? Uh, the thing that you it's told me about. It's a free streaming the... app that yeah. you can get on Fire Stick and everything else, and it's just got loads of quiz shows, lots of police shows. It's like Dave, but with more. And then it's got loads of films, and Galaxy Quest's on there uh their playlist it's got a load of old films on there mm. 
Um, but yeah, Galaxy Quest is on there. And it's just, it's one of those films that it outdoes Trek at points. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really good film. Like, it, yeah, it's just really good. Well, yeah. as an untitled Trek show, we'll have to do Galaxy Quest one day. <laughs> we, I think we, we should do something like a live watch along or something with yeah. that at some point. Because it's, uh, I've got to watch it again because it's just brilliant. Mm. And right. the cast on it, brilliant. But anyway. Um, so, two Vix. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. We start off two Vix on an away mission with Tuvok and Neelix. And it's a first, rough start. <laughs> the first thing I've written, oh God, I hate Neelix. He's just so peppy. You can see that Tuvok just really wants to nut him. <laughs> yeah, you can see quite clearly this is not an away mission that Tuvok, Tuvok is particularly to be pleased with. He's really into botany, I think, the kind of backstory of him. And he has his favourite flower is an orchid, as Neelix yes. even says himself. But it's it's clearly were he to choose somebody to go on this away mission with it, <laughs> it wouldn't have be been neelix. neelix but i can see why because they're in a an area where they don't know and he supposedly does know this kind of stuff so i can yeah see. can i just point out that's the constant storyline they use for him yeah oh you're from this quadrant you know your way around does he sh- fuck he just he's useless i suppose it's kind of like saying the humans well, they're from Earth. That's in the Milky Way. They must know every single planet's for- fauna and flora that's in the Milky Way. Yes, but my point is... is or whenever, larger. Whenever Neelix has been relied on for something, like when they first come across him and they say, right, let's... Uh, can you... Oh, I know someone that might be able to help you. Notice he takes them to everywhere where he is shit on his own doorstep. No <laughs> one likes him. Mm. Wherever he goes, he's not liked. Yeah. And they choose to keep him on board. Yeah. Well, there's some something. There must be someone must like something about him. I did on my notes. I've wrote what great makeup Neelix actually has. I'd noticed particularly maybe just the lighting. I was looking at. And I thought, you know what? As much as I don't like the character, they've done a really good job with the makeup. We've said this all along, haven't we? Whenever we've talked about Voyager, especially with things like Threshold, the makeup team Threshold. for Paramount Threshold <laughs> from. Um, so this is 1995 onwards Voyager. Yeah. I didn't realise it was that late, to be honest. As I, I know I missed it first time round because I didn't have Sky, so I would have watched it on the first time it got aired in the UK on Terrestrial, which was BBC Two on their Sci Fi nights. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I didn't realise it was 95. I didn't realise it was that light, late into the 90s. But the makeup crew that Paramount have paid and the Star Trek and CBS have paid to do it, it's incredible. And yeah, you're right. His makeup is really, really good. Yeah. When you consider what Data looked like in The mm-hmm. Next Generation. And okay, he for what it was and what he, he needed, to, he looked fine. Yeah. But you could always see like the reddening around his eyes, where he was starting to get irritated by the latex and the uh, by the coloured um, contact lenses and stuff like that. But Neelix's character just always looks flawless. I think as well, like when you watch the HDified versions of Next Gen, they have the issue that all of that era does. You can see the makeup. Do you know what I mean? You can see the makeup. Yeah, it was never designed for HDCV. Yeah. It was designed for standard well, definition. Th- Voyager kind of seems to get away with it a little bit more. It feels, well, other than the fact it's a completely different generation of yeah. of TV and filming style, I guess. Mm. they. I don't know if they had a bigger budget for Voyager. Um, I'd be intrigued to see what the budget was between that and the next generation. Yeah. As obviously a lot of budget was put behind the next generation because it was carrying on from what the world knew, the original series and the films. So it had to be good. Even though you read all the stories that Patrick Stewart lived out of his briefcase for, not his briefcase, his suitcase even, for the first series, because he didn't think it was going to be a successful TV series. Mm. Um, But I would have said the budget must have been quite big, but I don't know if they then did the same budget or an even bigger one for Voyager to make it a success. I don't know. I'd be interested to see. But, Definitely the makeup's good. Now, I've got written here, he just always looks dirty. And I know that's that's the makeup and that's what he's meant to look like, but he always just looks greasy. It's something, I think it must be about the hair and the texture they've made his skin and the, yeah. the patina on his skin that they've given him. He just looks dirty, greasy, and 
just, uh, I don't know. There's just something about it. Just, you, you just think you need a wash. Yeah. <laughs> so they're on the planet. They're messing around. Well, Neelix is messing around too. Volker clearly is not messing around. Well, yeah, I've got no. How about we don't sing a fucking song? Just look for the fucking flowers. Oh, you that was cunt. really funny, wasn't it? It was like a death march or something. You start singing. <laughs> but that's, yes, that's a traditional Vulcan death march. Yeah, in, in Vulcan, yeah. Or funeral song or something like yeah. that. It's like, yeah, well done there, Neelix. And he just goes, oh, I quite like it. He just keeps singing it anyway, doesn't he? Yeah classic but yeah they're looking for the flower and then we suddenly bounce back to voyager in the transporter room and the transporter room. and is there a storm inbound or something there's always a storm inbound there's at these points isn't there's there there's the, something happening the engine, that they need to so, come back yeah so not dirty kim there's another engineer there with him who's a continued character on that on yes. voyager and he's having trouble with the transporter for whatever reason i believe it's lieutenant hogan is that his name i think so yeah only purely by imdb yeah he he appears later on in the episode again actually um yeah so they they're messing around and dirty kim's there and they both start fucking around with the teleporter and then they're like oh it's all right now basically yeah it, it comes they're on the bridge and they say right we need to get you up for whatever the reason is but we're having problems with the transporters so they check in with engineering and they check in with Dirty Kim and Hogan, we think. And have you got it fixed? And he basically says, hang on a moment, Captain. We think we've got it. We've just got to do one more thing. Right, let's give it a try. Now, when someone says, right, let's give it a try, don't you think you'd, you'd kind of radio down to Juvik and Neelix and say, you know those flowers you've got? Can you just grab something, put it on the floor, and we we want to transport it up to see if it works or not? Yeah. I, not... I think I fixed it, so let's give it a try on two prized members of... Well, one prized member of the crew. (laughs) If I'm having my entire DNA structure decompiled and recompiled, try isn't really the word I want to be (laughs) using. You don't want Dirty Kim saying... (laughs) Oh, we'll give it a try. I think we fixed it. Yeah. Really confident there, guys. Really confident. There might be a, a few. What are they, what are they the spirals they're called? Uh, of DNA spirals, what are they called? Um, do you know what I mean? There's... Oh, yeah, double helix. Yeah, the double helix. There might be one or two of those out of place. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just give it a try. Who, who cares? Yeah, well, and then they end up with only one being yeah, in so... the transporter room. <laughs> so I've got, yeah, the makeup's definitely well done in Voyager. Hats off to them again. So we've already talked about that. But my favourite bit is, you can tell it's the two merged together. I know they've got different actors, oh, yeah, so let's not go tell. into that. Yeah. But you can tell straight away that the plot of this story is they've both been merged together. Yeah. Why did Kim need to suddenly go off on the whole panic station? Oh my God, it's an intruder. No, you've just beamed up two people. You've ended up with one. And they look scarily like those two have been mashed together in a Play-Doh machine. Yeah. And they're wearing a Starfleet uniform of sorts yeah is it really intruder kim or are you just being a little dick yeah i couldn't decide whether they uh, because this goes with what i was oh no actually no so i was thinking like because their costumes get merged together but later when they get separated yeah that doesn't happen the uniforms are kind of normal at that point but but I, then he isn't wearing that merged uniform when they separate him. He's wearing a normal uniform. I think, yes. Later on. I really like that merged uniform. Yeah, I, I thought, thought it was it pretty cool. Really cool. I thought it was cool. <laughs> I I remembered the merge being a bit more dramatic than that, but nothing really happens. They just he just appears and he's there. The, yeah. the, there's no like big kind of like <laughs> of merging of creatures and stuff. It so, just he appears. So I don't know. Have you? I, I was a bit disappointed with how they did that. You're right. I was expecting something more to it. Now, maybe it's because they were catering more towards a younger audience, so they didn't want to make it too traumatic. I don't know. But have you ever seen the very first Star Trek film? So it's called Star Trek The Motion Picture. It's mm-hmm. a very long-winded film. It's not considered the... I enjoy it personally. It's where they get Vija turn up, and it turns out it's the Voyager Pro, blah, blah, blah. At the very beginning of it, they kill off an unknown character immediately. Right. Uh, basically, they're at um, space dock and the transporter goes wrong. <laughs> and what you get is the transporter person, oh my God, it's not going. So William Shatner jumps over and he starts doing this, teching the tech and everything like that. And it still goes wrong. But all you basically hear is this 
horrible, dark, just terrifying scream as the person is just appears and just then disappears. Deatomized. Right? And it's just it's horrifying the noise they do. And then just to really, really hit it home at how fucking horrible it is, he then go he he as I think he is on the Enterprise and he he um gets on his commuter and goes communicating to space doc he said have you got them and he's like whatever came back didn't live long oh great to give you the idea it basically just re-atomized reappeared on their their transporter pad as this blob of just mix up atoms screaming impact it's horrible mm-hmm. and part of me wanted that for this not not the horrible death but to actually have some sort of like maybe both of them appearing on the transport pad and then merging into one on the transport yeah. pad and maybe have a kind of a scream from both of them as it kind of merges into to give you the idea that they're merging not just it happens and then dirty kim running away saying it's an intruder yeah and how great was the acting of that other guy? His so, face. Yeah. So. <laughs> when he sees this guy, to, you know, the, t- the transport dude, he's just got this, I just I just wrote hammed up, is what I've written here. So that turns up later and I'm pretty sure it's the same actor. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> and I bet you it'll be the bit I bring up, you go, that's the Anybody same Anybody that watched this episode and isn't just this one they will know exactly what we're talking about (laughs) this one extra basically (laughs) got paid extra to be really really hammy yeah he made sure he got the airtime definitely um but yeah it it, it's not a bad idea for an episode i'm not going to say it's it's one of the worst void episodes but i don't think it is um and actually as story goes it's quite a strong story and like you said, being critical of it now rather than watching it when we were younger just because it was Star Trek and we were watching it, but watching it to try and dissect it and break it down, this is a good start to the episode. Yeah. Um, and now we get the wicked intro. Oh, yeah. Then we go straight into good old... I guess it's great. I just love all the Star Trek intros. I do. Yeah, all of them are good. They all need a little bit more French horn, though. Yeah. Like DS9. Get the old <laughs> French horn in there as well. I'd be happy. Yeah, <laughs> really good. But yeah, okay. So then we we come back on to Voyager, don't we? And the Doctor goes straight to the Doctor now. He's to the Doctor, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we play a game that I like to call insert music here, editor Rob. Molecular bingo. <laughs> How many times in this episode are you going to hear the word molecular? It's yeah. <laughs> A bit like Threshold. We had Threshold, bingo, now we've got Molecular, molecular bingo. bingo. And the dogs... I love the fact that... Best character in the series. Well, he is the equivalent of Data, but for Voyager, isn't he? So yeah, Data, I you've got so. full-on, just speaks in that kind of monotonous voice, doesn't really have an understanding or kind of emotion towards things, and just says the maybe says the wrong things at the right right time or even the wrong time or says things in a way that most people would say you really need to, to kind of not say whereas the doctor mm-hmm. again is just the same it's just either he's grumpy or he's just straight to the point it's like yeah you're fucked <laughs> because, the thing is because the doctor he represents somebody who is coded an ai for a very specific job and not to be anything else but the best at that job and that is being the doctor in an emergency because he's the emergency exactly. hologram he's the everyone EMH. remember he's not he's not just the doctor he's meant to only be open in emergency he doesn't need to they didn't have to waste their time giving him bedside manners or nope. anything like that he's meant to be to the point this is emergency fix this fix this i don't yeah. care about your human emotions you're gonna oh, die shit. fix this plasma conduits blown up and it's killed four people i need an extra pair yeah. of hands turn the emh on yeah right you deal with that i'm dealing with this that's what he was there for yeah exactly i think he plays that really particularly in season one he plays that exactly how i would like him to be and it is good how over the series is it kind of changes because he's there all the time you can see the ai is like learning and moving yeah. around and i think he is the best character in the entire series now what i was going to say is is star trek the next generation first contact mm. after they 
Voyager comes home. I'm guessing it must no, be. No, well, that's not the same EMH. No, I know it's not the same EMH, but I was just going to say, so the original EMH we get on Voyager, Yeah. in that first few episodes, he's blunt, he's abrasive, he's... Straight to the point. He's exactly like you just said. He's the EMH as he's meant to be. Mm-hmm. But then we come over to Star Trek First Contact. Mm-hmm. EMH, it's our favourite doctor all of a sudden. And good old Bev crushes. And I was like, we've got Borg going to come in through that door any minute. Delay them. But I'm the EMH. Don't care. Delay them. And he has emotion. That's what what what, what kind of... Is it after Voyager and they've updated his programme to be able to show different emotions so that is more comforting for people because the ball's coming through and he's going so you you i hear that being a ball your skin's dry and, and you see that he's he's visibly nervous which if that had been the first couple of episodes of voyager it would have just been i'm an emh and <laughs> yeah i, I wonder so we'll, i don't we'll have know. to look it up i wonder yeah please state the nature of the medical emergency 20 Borg are about to break through that door. We need time to get out of here. Create a diversion. This isn't part of my program. I'm a doctor, not a doorstop. Well, do a dance. Tell a story. I don't care. Just give us a few seconds. According to Starfleet Medical Research, Borg implants can cause severe skin irritation. Perhaps you'd like an analgesic cream? Did did they? The film came after. In fact, no, the film would have been ninety five actually. So oh, I don't know actually. You know, I don't know if that is then because I'm pretty sure First Contact was nineteen ninety five, which is when Voyager first aired. So maybe it's just it's, the way they decided to play maybe. the character in that instance, and it's not. Yeah, possibly. It yeah, for film they've just made him out like you, you're quite right. I'm I'm probably looking into it way too much, but. He is my one of my favourite characters from Voyager, if not my favourite character. He he is my favourite character from Voyager. He and he gets, pardon me, I know we're going off on a tangent here as normal, but he gets good character progression. Yeah. They actually treat him really well as a character throughout of it, whether it's the very beginning and how he is, and then how he kind of calms down and softens up thanks to Kez, through to the point that he gets excited about being put on a mission. Yeah. And it being and having hollow emitters around the ship so he can then come out of the sick bay, or then helping save Voyager from the aliens that take over and make them all live in the hollow deck, recreating World War Two. He, it, it's really an interesting you character. Haven't seen all of Discovery, have you? No. They go through some AI stuff in Discovery. I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't watched the, the oh, okay. last season of Discovery, but they act like. AI being sentient in that way is a new thing. But it it, it but, would be for them because they're... A... No, in Discovery, in the future. Oh, in the future. Whereas in... Oh, well, that this, makes no this, sense. This EMH is actually... I'm only just thinking of it right now. Whereas this EMH has basically become sentient, an AI that has now become completely sentient, as far as I can tell in it. And he's his own being. And they let him be a member of the crew and properly. Well, and... You've got same with data, I guess. You've got data. You've got um, Professor Moriarty from the hologram, uh, the Hollow Suite novel that goes wrong on on um, yeah, TNG. TNG yeah. So, and th- I'm guessing it's because it's its own timeline that I, they've they've chosen not to go. I just think it's a very strange thing. No, to... I think Discovery isn't its own timeline. I think it is meant to be. Oh, is it? Yeah, as far as I'm aware. Oh dear. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, each their own, but I think that's a very strange choice to make then. To have... I think, though, actually, maybe it's because the, it's the AI that's running the ship that's sentient. And I think maybe that's the distinction they're making. Right, Because okay. it's the actual computer AI of the ship is now sentient and it's stopping them from doing stuff because it doesn't agree. Oh, okay. It's a good episode. I'm just trying, I'm just kind of idea. going through it in my head. I, I think, though, I still think you should watch that last season, Discovery. Uh, I will get it saves to it. it saves the seasons before it. Put it that way. As I'm just, it. I know we've we've talked about Discovery before. It's just that first season really put me off, and then the whole. It gets worse, dude. And then the second season of we had a a Klingon baby and 
all, all sorts of bloody things going on. And then it turns out he's not human. He's Klingon in disguise. And, oh, it's just... It's good it's that they move so away. Messy. Yeah, it's good that they moved away from that. But I think the first season they go into the future is, in my opinion, the worst season of all of them. I think that's season three. Yeah, so I've watched a little three. bit of that, and I just got, I lost all will to kind of want uh, to watch it. Yeah. Um, when they meet the bloke that's got his own spaceship, who's running away from the intergalactic yeah, police or whoever it is, and that the Federation is just one star base on its own now with literally one man behind it it just it's you got to push through it i literally only watched it because the missus was enjoying it and i was like okay which i'll keep watching it but the last season i'm actually glad i think they're doing another season i think there's only two episodes in all the discovery i've watched that i enjoyed Mm -hmm. the one that they do the whole evil empire, which every se- yes. series seems to do. But it's and Mich- they did it well, but it's because of... Michelle Yao's in it. Michelle Yao. Yeah. She is just brilliant yeah. in it. She's a great And character. I love that they bring her back as well and stick her off in Section 13 or whatever it's called. Yeah. Section 31, 30? Oh, whatever. Section Hidden. Yeah. Um, Redacted. And then the other one is with Harry Mudd. Basically, um, Ginger Bird keeps on going back in time, and Harry oh, Mudd yeah. keeps on killing the captain in various different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I really enjoyed as an episode, and I it was really clever, mm-hmm. and it was doing something that was based on a character from the original series, but they'd done their own thing with it, yeah, and they'd done it well, yeah. So I really enjoyed that. But those are the only two episodes I've really enjoyed from Discovery. So that's not a good sign. <laughs> Sorry. We've gone a little bit far from... We have, right. Sorry, yeah. Let's get back let's to Back to the Doctor. Bits. Back to the Doctor being our favourite. What am I supposed to do? Lead a revolt with the gang from Sandrine's? Conjure up holograms of Nathan Hale and Che Guevara? I'm a doctor, not a counterinsurgent. And that's what, So here we are as the Doctor's basically telling us what's happened. What yes. he thinks has happened. Now, I've got to say, Tom Wright is the actor that's playing Tuvix, has done an absolutely fantastic job in his portrayal of both Tuvok and Neelix. And I did a little bit of reading on this, and apparently he was friends with um, both actors. Oh, okay. Apparently they used to yeah, that's why they chose him, maybe. regularly audition for the same roles, oh, right. so he got to know them, and basically decided to base his portrayal of Tuvix on the actual actors and not their characters. Oh, cool, yeah. And it, it, it was a re he just does a brilliant, brilliant job. Yeah. The only thing I can say is, how has he come up with a voice that's more annoying than Neelix's? Yeah. It's weird. He, he plays this character very well, and I don't like his character. I actually don't like... Um, two vicks. Two vicks. No, I don't at all. Not not until near the. Uh, I think I fear I felt for him. I think is what it is, but I so didn't actually like him. That's true. That's the difference, isn't it? I didn't like his character. I found him a little bit lechy, a bit dirty kid. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll get to that. I did not like a lot of everything he did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, you're right. The only thing that saves him is the final plea for his life and that's not saying that the actor did a bad job because the actor did a fantastic job portraying Tuvix it's just the character is written in such a way that I just couldn't like him and even his saving graces of him trying to say please let me live kind of sided with Janeway <laughs> as, ho- as horrible as it is and we'll get there later we'll get but... there we might have different differing opinions on that um, so it's funny because he cho- chooses his name to he chooses his own name Tuvix. Yes. And I was thinking in my head, it's like, mm, I think I actually prefer Nuvok. Nuvok would have been a better and name. And he even said, I forgot, he says it. He goes, Oh, I was thinking Nuvok, but I went with Tuvix. Like, oh, it wasn't just me thinking that then. <laughs> Nuvok is a better name. Yeah, I like Nuvok. I would Nuvok. have so much gone with Nuvok, but I wonder if they, I wonder if the writers and the producers and the directors of it said, it's too likable of a name. Go for two Vix, which isn't as likable. And it's like two is in the number two. Yeah, and you've got the whole the whole bit that goes with it. But I do wonder if if they'd stuck with Nuvok, people would have found it hard to have got rid of his character because it just 
was a better name. Yeah, I, I do kind of feel like he looked a bit more like Tuvok, but acted a bit more like Neelix. Does yes. That make, what, does that make sense? It, no, it he makes was sense. a good amalgamation of them both. but And it was very clever how it was written and how he portrayed the whole... At this point, I'm acting as Neelix. Now I'm acting as Tuvok. Yeah. And then I'm acting as the amalgamated pair. So there's there's three separate requirements for him to act. It's It was impressive. I, I've wrote a note here. I love the Doctor. He hates Tuvix. I, I, I get the impression in that scene that the Doctor does not actually like him either. So I don't know if it's the Doctor doesn't like him. I think this is kind of our first kind of insight into the Doctor hating when he doesn't have an answer. Yeah, I think that might be what it is. I've I think it, read it. It, it's more likely that the Doctor's just angry and doesn't like the fact that he can't come up straight away and go, I know how to fix this. Yeah. Because you, you, um, I don't, can't remember if we've had the episode yet or not when the organ harvesters take Neelix's lungs. I don't know if that's happened yet. I think it has. I think okay. it's actually quite early on, and he creates the hologrammatic, uh, hologrammatic, holographic lungs to keep him alive, which is a whole other thing we need to talk about when we talk about that episode. But um, has he still got them? No, 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 no. They get the lungs back in the end. They track down the bloke that stole them, and they, they've got the technology to put it all back and what and sort it all out. But um, you get the idea that he, the doctor is a very proud man. Yeah when it comes to being able to fix things. Yeah. It's almost like it was a flaw written to it, into it, the EMH program that he does have one emotion and it is he has to get something right. Or, pride. Yeah, it's pride. Absolutely. This is one of the few episodes in the entirety of Voyager that I don't mind Kess. Agreed, actually. She and I, very well. I do wonder if a lot of Kez's problems are, if you wrote Neelix out, would Kez have been a better character? Yeah. I think um, so. Because she always ends up playing second fiddle to Neelix. I don't like Neelix, therefore I don't like Kez. Yeah. Yeah. Now, something happened in this scene that I really hate in all Star Trek, and all Star Trek does it. And that is Captain Janeway for once. So, every Star Trek does this, Yeah. Um, the Doctor explains something super complicated scientifically. Yep. Or it could be that they are in um, the astrophysics unit and there's seven of nine and she's explaining something super, super detailed about astrophysics. Yep. Or they could be in engineering and you've got Bilana Torres and she's doing talking about something super, super physicky. Mm-hmm. Every fucking captain seems to know everything under the sun. And mm -hmm. it's such bullshit. I'm sorry. I hate that. You, you would have your specialisms. Fine. You would be a specialist in, oh, well, yeah, I'm a captain, but previously I used to be an engineer. Like Scotty. Yeah. I was an engineer all my life. If he was a captain, he would know everything about engineering, but you wouldn't expect him to know everything about astrophysics and or being a doctor and everything. Yet Janeway and Picard does this as well. They always seem to know everything about what's going on. So the doctor goes, so it's all to do with the molecular problem. And Jane Wayne's like, so it's just like this. And then starts ringing off. It's like, yeah. oh, we don't actually need anyone, do we? We just need Janeway on the ship. Yeah, or we just need Picard on board. Yeah, exactly. And Tuvix says something to her and she's like, oh, flattery gets you nowhere. And I, and I, I wrote, yes, it fucking does. Flattery <laughs> gets you everywhere with oh, that Oh, it, it that does with Janeway. Woman. Yeah. I've literally wrote, you're a liar. <laughs> we know flattery is your jam. And by the way, where is Tom? As in, where's Tom Paris? I wrote, I bet he's still cuffed to her bed. He's in the sex dungeon. He's <laughs> yeah. in the sex dungeon. I don't dungeon. know if he's in the entire episode. Uh, he he's. I'm sure we get a glance of him, but I don't think he's in, in much of it at all. Oh, you know what? He's in the ready room with them. I was, yeah. Yeah, I'm, he appears I'm in the ready room. He's actually a background character for once. Yeah. Um, he's too busy just chained up in a bloody room, isn't he? In, a <laughs> in, sex the, in Janeway's red room. Yeah. Um, would you have preferred one of the original actors to have played two Vix? So would you have preferred like um, Tim Russ or Ethan Phillips to have played? No, I'm glad. Or... I'm glad it's a different actor entirely. Snap. Because that leans into what I think is right. And that is, this is a new being 
and I think I wrote in my notes, notes later on when it comes up, Neelix and Tuvix are dead. Sorry, Neelix and Tuvok, in my eyes, are dead. No, I agree. It's 100%. They have died in a transporter accident. Yep. That is the end of it for that that sort of side of it. And everyone now should be grieving the loss of their friends. Because and if, that's it. What if the Doctor had come back and said, there is no fix for this? Well, he does. He basically does say that. But they keep fucking around. Until they find a fix. But my point, yeah, okay, let's go two months down the line. And the Doctor still hasn't found a fix. When does the Captain do the log to say... I must send a note to Tuvox family. We don't care about Neelix family. We'll just throw an envelope out in space and hopefully someone will pick it up that knows him. Um, we're sorry, but he died in the line of duty. Right, okay. That would be fairly immediate if it was any other crew member. So let's say it takes them 10 years to find a solution. What? And, they, and they're still going through the Delta Quadrant, right? 10 years. At this point, Tuvix has found a relationship with maybe Kez. They've had a child. And suddenly you come along and say, Oh, oh we can fix we you. We can fix you. I don't want to be fixed. I've been alive and I'm 10 years old with my, my, so my 12 year old wife. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that she's literally one year old at this point. <laughs> yeah. And it's fully accepted that she's with him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's it's grim <laughs> you know at what when's the cutoff date that everyone's going to accept it and Janeway at this point cannot turn it round what's the cutoff but it should have been immediately it, in my book it should have been immediate because if we are now she does a captain's dog we're now two weeks later yes so, and, and you want to know the star date I wrote it down oh god then what's the star four, date 4967.8.4 now, I wanted to restart the episode and see what the star date was, because if she says the star date at the start, so then I could actually understand what the star dates are. <laughs> yeah, I still <laughs> What's don't two understand weeks in them. the star date? Yeah, 49678.4. Yeah, I, I, I'll never understand um, the whole star date thing. It's um, very, very so April odd. 5th, 2063. So that's, no, this is first contact star date. Oh, okay. I'm just seeing... If we can match it to Captain's Log Star Date. Oh, it is. So 49678.4 is And we Captain's Log Star Date 50893.5. Okay, so, so after. first contact is after their back. No, it can't be. 49. Or oh, it depends how long is 49 to. Well, exactly. We don't know zero. what that is. So Voyager, I would guessing Voyager's still missing then in first contact. Let's well, assume. Well, that's just understanding what 49, because that's not a year. We have to understand how long a year is in star dates. That's very true. We do. And who knows? Um, oh, my God. This is all very, very... There's an advert there for True Detective. <laughs> a great yeah. series, everybody. Uh, so, yeah. Star Trek First Contact, 50893.5. Voyager Homestead. Voyager the Gift, Dark Frontier. So the earliest Voyager star date they've got here is 40840. So it looks like maybe one... I, I couldn't tell you then. Yeah, exactly. It makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense to me at all. And I think we're just padding time that we don't need to see. We know this is going to go on for a long, long time. Um, so anyway, back... Right, so they're in the ready room. Loads of them are sat around the table. This is actually where Paris is. And this is where we first hear the term symbio... Was it symbiogenesis? Symbiogenesis oh, or something. Symbiogenesis. Oh, God damn it. Symbiogenesis. Yeah. Yes. Which is there to... Good luck, Simon, because that's going to be one of your words. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's... The idea is, is that you've got two life forms as one. Did you notice... So she is flirting fucking heavily with everyone in that room. Always. She stands up, as they all do. I think Tuvix stands up and kind of talks and stuff. And is like, I really hate that in a conference time. Imagine you being at work, having a conference, and you're around a conference. So does your boss stand up and, and start walking around? And we all take turns around? and stand up to talk. Yeah, when it's your point. It's your turn to make a point. You're not like, just standing up, just start walking around the table and put your hands on someone's shoulders. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of vibe I get, particularly with Void. They didn't do it in the next gen. 
They didn't do it. Everyone sat at that table. No, no, no. Riker sat backwards on a chair or with his leg up. Everyone's by his too ear scared hole. to stand up in case they've got loads of his dust all <laughs> over their shoulders. <laughs> I'm not standing up because. How can we beat perfection? <laughs> now, I know it's probably just a filming thing they want the characters to, you know... It's about in giving a... movement on screen and making it but interesting to look at as well also, as listen to. whether they filmed it in 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 they stand so close. Yes. Their faces are really close. And I'm just like, he can smell her breath. She wants him to. But don't forget, just... also, Voyager is a small ship in comparison to the Even Enterprise. Even not so small that you have to be touching noses... <laughs> You know. Eskimo kiss. Rub, 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 rub. I don't know. I just think Janeway is just such a. I'm going to say, I don't think she's sexy, but she's a sexy character. Oh, yeah. I don't find her particularly sexy, but I no, think she is a sexy she, she, character. She uh, emotes it, doesn't she? I think she does, yeah. Um, I've also got a point here. I'm thinking this probably happened maybe a scene back. Um, Tuvik says, if. Oh, that no, it is around before the two week bit because he's saying. Well, I can be at tactical. And Janeway's kind of pushing towards, I just want you in the galley because <laughs> I can hide you there. Go on, hide you in the galley. Yeah. No, I've got all my security but knowledge still. Yeah. So uh, they kind of accept it. And there must be a place for me. And I've written here horribly in the incinerator. Yeah. And it, it, oh, they, and they're talking about fixing him, air quotes. Uh, and I think it hasn't clicked in his head that fixing him would kill him. No, because he's hasn't. willing to help, and I think it hasn't quite well, yet. He's just willing to be this new creation, isn't he? Yeah. Now, I've got here. Oh, I've got a, I've got a, a comment on the bridge. But anyway, go oh on. no, no, go, go on. Good deal. When you see, uh, what's the first officer called again? I can never remember his bloody name. Oh, Jackoff. <laughs> Shakote, Jackote, Jackote, Jackote. When you sit, sorry, that's it. Because I I know how to say it, and you always get it wrong, but you remember it. (laughs) Chakote. When he sits down, and the console comes down, that big, massive console. Do you notice how slow and sluggish it was coming down? I just wrote, just wrote, that's impractical. Why can't (laughs) they just be there the whole time? Why does it have to stow away? It's not in anyone's way. (laughs) <laughs> is it? It's like, who's away is it in? And to be fair, you're in this world. They've all got little pads. Yeah. Why are they not just carrying around a pad? It's like, I'm sat in this chair, so it's now pulled up all the information that this chair entails. I feel like that's probably how it would work. Exactly. It's like, I'm sitting in the captain's chair. Boom. Captain mode. I'm sat in the first officer's chair. Porn. Oh, dear. <laughs> Riker was sat here last. Um, oh, dear. So then we get to the bit where... Tuvix goes and becomes a sex pest. Yeah. And, yeah, I kind of got... He's creepy as fuck, I yeah. here. <laughs> I got a carry Neelix spunk in me. It's all of yours, Kez. Come on, come on. Have me, Kez. Go on, have me, have me. Have I sex with me, Kez. He isn't... He's not... Um, He's obviously got Neelix's feelings. Yes. But he's not using... To, um, he's not using two, two voxes. well unless two vox going through pom far which is the <laughs> yeah, the, the exactly. whole bu- Vulcan puberty Be- thing because there's no logic here that he has no understanding that actually kes it's only two weeks since her best friend boyfriend whatever they are died yeah and only he's now like two weeks Kes, i've got feelings for you i want you it's like don't you get how creepy that is that not only are you part of her dead lover yeah. But you're also part of her best friend in Tuvok because Kez and Tuvok are very close in the series. Yeah. And it's basically what you're saying is Am I talking to Neelix or does Tuvok want to give me one as well? Because that gets even more confusing then. Yeah, and I don't think Neelix is attractive, but he certainly isn't. No. Look at that hair. <laughs> no. That odd hair. It got odd strands Just of hair. All of it. Got. And even. I know I said it about Neelix, but even Tuvix just look greasy. Yeah. I, I, it's just the shine of the makeup, but he just looks gross. It's yeah, just like... and he kind of, and he touches her, doesn't he? And he kisses her. And I just think, I don't like any of this. She's, he needs to be me too for that scene. <laughs> he really does. The, the computer just needs to ping up saying security to this room, please, because he's just touched her up. I was not happy with it at all. So uncomfortable. Like, playing on this grieving woman's heartstrings, mm. trying to worm his way in. 
and I then did not like it. And then eventually saying to her as well, not just then saying, by the way, I fancy you and I think we should make a go of this, blah, blah, blah. But then going to her and going, can you please go to Janeway and say that you'd like me to stay as this, please? I th- I think I what, just think that's so out of order. Yeah, I think what it is is I think they're trying to make it show that Neelix has that he still has feelings for her because Neelix had feelings for her. But they played it as in like he just expects her to be the same. Yeah, he really he should just have to just bend been... over and, and just accept what's going <laughs> on. Yeah, I, as soon as I wrote, I've said it, it's like, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong thing to say. I mean it would have fit with his attitude. Like he he really should have gone, look, I'm really struggling with how to compartmentalise our relationship. I'm part Neelix, part Tuvok. I have got feelings for you like Neelix that I don't know how to act around you. You clearly aren't ready for my for my company because Correct. you're grieving. Let they do do Let's this eventually. Give you some distance. We should I really think that even though this is gonna really hurt my feelings, I think it's the right thing to do for us going forward is we need to Stay apart from each other yeah, until because you've that, had time to work out what's going on in your head and I have had time to work as out As that leads too. on to the captain's log, doesn't it, where she's saying he's integrated with the crew now and yeah. he's, surprisingly, the Tuvok part of him can actually cook, so it's actually better in the galley than it's ever been, mm. but he takes his security duties just as seriously and I've still got my tactical officer, blah, blah, blah. But what I, the bit I particularly didn't like was after the whole sex pest thing, I've got written here, uh, Kez, go to HR or Janeway. Oh, no, no, Janeway says it's fine. Yeah. It's just the whole Janeway speech there is, you've got to understand, he's going through changes as well. Yeah, I understand that. That doesn't give him, entitle him to kind of come up to me and basically shame me into wanting to have sex with him and be with him because he's half the person I used to be with. Yeah. So Janeway should have really gone... I'll have a word with him. And then, like you said, mm. you need to care, give Kez the distance. And if they could have done that. That could have been written in really nicely of Janeway just having, walking through the ship with him and just saying, you've got to remember, you are an individual now. You're not the two individuals you were and you need to give them space. And then going to that captain's log saying, yeah. he's really thrown himself into life on the ship. He's becoming a crew member. For all we know, that was in there. But for her to have ever admitted that before the thing that she does later <laughs> is even more incriminating for her, yeah, right? But that, I think that would have actually in, made it better because it would show that she's not just considered her feelings and what everyone else has and the fact that she wants her two crew people back, but that she's also considered that, yes, I've accepted that this is a individual as well. Yeah. And I think they they could have done with that actually mm. to show that she was a, a a proper emotional turmoil from it because honestly, when we get there, I don't think you get that much turmoil from her. No, you don't get the feeling that she's absolutely broken from it. She's playing. She plays very stoically. She does, yeah. yeah. And um, because I think that she doesn't want, and I think I think that maybe she just doesn't want to show it to the crew because you can see the crow the crow the crew are really a bit like what do we do and they all they're all on the bridge we're gonna get there they're on the bridge looking to her and she's like i've got to be the one to just do this absolutely now there's a bit that i I, I, there's a bit i've written as well when they've done that whole chat and she's going on about how he's he's integrated into the crew yeah i've got here realistically no one actually misses the original two characters don't Neelix, yeah, he's a pain in the eye. I don't like his character. We all know I don't like his character. But even most of the ship don't particularly like him. You look at how short and shrift everyone is with him. Yeah. Across the entire crew. He can't cook. No one likes his cooking, but they've got to put up with it because the replicators are all fucked. Yep. And then even Tuvok. No one really likes Tuvok. And actually, when I think about it, I've... Wouldn't have been sad to see his character go. He's not half Vulcan, is he? He's full Vulcan. He's full Vulcan. Yeah, he's he. Vulcans aren't likable anyway. They they are. Yeah, if you go by what the Vulcans are, and Enterprise does it very well when we get onto an Enterprise episode. 
they hate the Vulcans. Yeah. And it's actually really well done. And it gives you a good idea of why they do it. And they make the Vulcans unlikable. Yeah. Um, except for T'Pau, who is on the end. And there's a whole different story. But I just kind of, for me, I wouldn't have cared if Tim Russ's character disappeared. I wouldn't have cared if Tuvok's di- uh, Tuvok disappeared. Because as much as he is useful in a lot of the episodes and you get a lot of narrative between him and Kez and other characters... It's not one I would have missed. Yeah, but it's. A, I think that having a um, oh fuck, I've instantly forgotten what race he was. <laughs> Imagine a mind blank, Tuvok. A Vulcan. A Vulcan having a Vulcan in the tactical position is quite good. Yeah, and it, it, it makes kinda... a bit more logical sense than having a Klingon in tactical. Well, and I don't know if that kind of kind of yeah, Klingon Jesus. Blow it up! It's a friendly <laughs> ship, Mr. War. Worf... Turn the shields off, turn off the torpedoes. <laughs> okay, Captain, I'm sorry. Worf works because of the other crew members around yeah. him. And I How, want... Imagine having him with Janeway. I do wonder if we got a Vulcan on Voyager because TNG didn't have one. Yeah. And the original series had a Vulcan, TNG didn't, Voyager, we, we, we should have had a Vulcan. It was a almost like a requirement so let's have a yeah. vulcan back yeah but then for deep space nine they didn't but for enterprise they did and they do they have one in discovery i don't think they've got one on discovery have they not on the bridge crew i don't think but somewhere and there there are recurring characters to be fair tng are. there's a couple of um Just alternating there's a couple of background characters that they have and one of the there's definitely a couple of them are there's that terrible episode where wesley crushes in charge and he's basically stressing that older people aren't going to do what he says and one of them's a vulcan and then there's the uh, when you get ensign Rowe turn up and they're all talking about their are they going to get uh promotions and one of them's one of them is a, a Vulcan. So there are Vulcans on the... Yeah, but I'm talking about main crew members, This is I a guess. different Ensign Row than what we're familiar with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this one, this <laughs> one can do shit. She turns up back in Picard, remember? Oh, it's a lady. But um, anyway, so... Oh, it's her. Yeah, yeah sorry. It's, it's her. Um, right, anyway, Kez has now act- has actually gone to Janeway for another, like, nearly 10-minute long sexy scene. Yes. And how often... So my have a comment here. How often did you see the male captains in bed robes uh that quite looks often that glorious though picard would wear the one that would literally if it was a oh wa- no you're right if he it did. was a warm set you would have seen testicle with picard oh but he had a really good chest i talked about that didn't he I? did he did he's quite attractive so. he, he he is <laughs> he is the gilf in <laughs> <laughs> <TNG>. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I never would have used the term gilf for Picard, but you're right. He's the granddad I'd yeah. like to fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, but I, um, I've wrote, well, I, I know it's a TV show, but she's got a lot of makeup on for a bird who's just been in bed. True. True. Um, I'm not going anywhere after having the friendship chat with Kez. So after he's finally accepted that. I, 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 I said the wrong thing and he goes back to Kez and says about I just want to be friends and just get on with our lives then um, <laughs> he says that fateful thing I'm not going anywhere oh yes you are Yeah. as soon as any character says that in anything you know they're about to die somehow yeah, yeah it's just it's guaranteed it is a full on Hollywood formula isn't it you have someone on screen, they say, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere for a long time. You can guarantee the next scene, they're going to have got shot or stabbed in the side. And it's that typical law of they must hide it until an hour later where they open their coat and the person goes, oh my God, you're bleeding. And they slowly die. Yeah. And that's exactly the case here, isn't it? With um, good old Tuvix. I'm not going anywhere. Literally the next scene, the doctor has worked out how to fix all of this. Right, I have a problem with this scene. Okay. So the doctor video calls Dirty Kim. Okay. Now Dirty Kim he and he wants to do a video call with him. So he calls him up and goes, So Dirty Kim walks up to the video screen. Yeah. Now rather than sit in front of it, he stands in front of it. Now this video screen is at groin level to Dirty Kim. <laughs> but if you look at the doctor, he's looking up. 
at Dirty Kim. Now, the webcam will be looking straight at Dirty Kim's groin. Yeah. And from the doctor's perspective, he's just looking at a monitor. It's not a hologram of Kim that he'll see. Imagine if you and me are doing a webcam and our webcams are at different height. I'm not looking ever at your eye line. I'm looking at the screen of where I see you. So from for you, you I would I won't be looking in your eyes. Unless I look directly at the camera, then it'll look like I'm looking at you. Mm. But only if you're sat directly in front of your screen. Yes. So why is the doctor looking up towards Kim's face? <laughs> I've got no idea. It makes doesn't make any even, sense. I haven't even twigged that. You're Watch right. that scene again, and you just see it, that threw me off because it's like he wouldn't be doing that. No, I think you're absolutely right there. Um, yeah, I just thought really I just found weird. that really. I just found that really odd. I didn't. It just kind of it made me not concentrate properly on that scene because I was just trying to figure out in what scenario would the doctor be looking in that way. Surely he'd actually go, can you just sit down so I can see your face? I'm just a bit bored of looking at your groin, Kim. <laughs> Dirty Kim by name and by nature. Unless there is some super technology that does angle cameras around. and Well, probably, but let's assume not because it's funnier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've kind of the next notes I've got now is to do with him saying that he's sentient um, and then going on about how I was I was going on about well you could consider them they they should be dead from the accident like we were chatting about earlier. That is another tick off for molecular bingo. Molecular bingo indeed yes, <laughs> um, and then yeah you've got Kez turning up say I'm here to talk to you about two Vicks I want you to kill him, yeah and um, I'll talk about the next bit in a moment but uh, I've got a comment about the pool table this is where we are weren't we we're playing pool. Yes yeah okay yeah we that, that was it it's just got to that point yes. So did you notice that? Everyone either has uniform or bedwear, but nothing in between. They're all there, unless they're on a break. It's, Everyone there is in their uniform. It's where your pyjamas to work day. <laughs> Everyone has to put one credit into the pot. They've got holograms in there, clearly holograms, because they're all in the... Well, yeah, they're in the bar in the hollow suite. Yeah. Everyone else is in their uniform. Yeah. And it's funny... Pardon me, the things that you don't pick up that the other person does. I hadn't even thought about that. You're right, yeah. So you've got people either, if they're in uniform... Maybe they're on a lunch break, that makes sense. They're in their uniform because they're just on a lunch break. Yeah, and then everything's synth the whole, so it's not like they're going to get drunk. It's like, yeah, I had 12 beers. Hey, jack off, I had 12 beers and yeah. I'm on the bridge. Hey. Yeah, but there's, there's no alcohol. <sighs> but on lunch breaks, do you go as a group and play pool? No, you probably go have yourself something to eat. Maybe just chat at a table. Oh, no, no, maybe I, you do I, go I've, play pool. I've been in know, businesses maybe. where, not necessarily gone and played pool, but I've been in a business or a company I used to work for called Vibra down in Park Street. Yeah. And on a Friday, we all used to have lunch at the same time and we'd go to the Red Lion pub in yep. uh, Radlett. Yeah. And we'd all have lunch. And yeah, if there'd been a pool day, we would have probably paid pool. Oh, okay. So, and no, it depends on the work group. And the, I would imagine the lower decks on lunch would go and play pool. Yeah, I guess you're right, yeah. It depends who you are. Yet, if you were Geordie, you'd probably be off programming some sort of dirty sex experience where you're trying to lay your next victim. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a Wesley Crusher, you're just going to be a geek and go and do some homework on your lunch. So, yeah, I think it's dependent on the people. Yeah. Okay. But um, now we're really at the point, aren't we, that everyone is saying he's sentient but we want you to kill him. And yeah. it's got round the ship because everyone is now staring at him. And this is, um, I'm pretty sure this is the same actor you were talking about when um, Janeway says to Tuvix, I need to think, I need to come up with a decision and I'll tell you when I have it. And that's a horrible thing to do. Yeah, Wouldn't you have said, I need to come up with a decision right now, I'm assigning you to quarters because I don't know what to do, and that is going to mentally fuck with you, so I can't trust you to be on a bridge or doing anything yeah. really important. Well, I think he uses the term execution here. He does, yes. And he's totally right. It this is. is her planning his execution. And in my opinion, 
the execution has already happened, and that was the teleporter accident. Well, Tra- but it wasn't an execution. Accident. It was an but it was accident, an accident. But those two people are, are lost. Dead. They are they dead. are gone. And I think I really think it's because it's it's over two weeks now. Everyone needs to have come to the realization that this has happened. They're dead. This is something that's happened, and now they have a new. One hundred percent, and it's really shitty that Jane Way hasn't dealt with that. As if that had been anyone else, if that had been one person lost in a transporter accident, there would have been the very next day a torpedo shell with his remains, gooey as whatever it is, fired off with everyone stood by it, and Amazing Grace being played by some random bloke on a bagpipe yet again. Now she shoots herself in the foot with her own logic here by saying to Tuvix. That does he not want to um, give up his life to save another person's life? Because I know that my friends Tuvix and Tuvok and Neelix would give up their lives to save another. It's like, well, there's your point. They would give up their lives to, to save, save someone Tuvix. So, the own... so why should he give up his life to save them? Like, okay, yeah. it's two for one. I understand. We're going by maths of people. Fine, but again. They're dead. So, yeah, I guess what you, 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 she could have full on gone Spock with the needs of the many outweigh the need of the few. That's the argument. Or or the one, even. That's the argument. And that, that is the argument. But I guess the way I would look at it is, and it's, it's, it's a horror, it is a horrible decision to be in. Yeah. Um, is we accept that their bodies are dead. Mm-hmm. But can you call someone dead when Tuvix full on says at the beginning of the episode that Neelix and Tuvok are still there? Well, he says their memories are there. Does he say their memories? I because I get the idea memories. that he's struggling to be one or the other before he eventually falls in the middle of them. I instead. think he says. He says something like they're there. He's there, but also I'm there. Exactly, but that—that's the point. They are there. So, drawing the line and saying that they're dead, yes. But if they are actually present in his brain, and he has no, just I, basically got the control of being able to say, he—he he does say specifically that. I think Kez asks him that, even the Kez of the Doctor mm. saying about, are they in there? And he says they're not. They're not in there and he's controlling them. They do make that distinction right in the Right, beginning. fine, yeah. okay. So yeah, ultimately then, you're absolutely right. Yes, he might have the memories of them, but ultimately they died on the transporter pad. That is the end of it. They should have had a full-on Starfleet funeral mm-hmm. and that should have been the end of it. There shouldn't be any point of this point. Even if they work out how to fix it, the answer is... It's Tuvik's choice at that point. Yeah, and this now is you've I assigned think, him a job, you've assigned yeah. him quarters, you've assigned allowed him to live yeah. a life. Yep. If you weren't going to allow him to live a life should and have say been in stasis. he should have been stuck in the brig, in stasis, in quarters, in the buffer, not allowed. <laughs> stick him in the buff. Um, he'd like to stick it in Kez's buffer. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Hoo, 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 hoo. But he shouldn't have been allowed to go and live with the rest of the crew absolutely. until a full on decision had been made absolutely absolutely yeah. and that's 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 it isn't it and once that decision has been made they need to say to the doctor stop yeah don't look into this anymore yeah although no i don't you... think the doctor would have stopped but i think of at that point you go officially have, but... we need to say we're not going to change this now this is it we've he's here if you do you know maybe if you do find a solution then that's going to come down to Tuvix to make the decision himself whether he wants to separate himself to bring them back. We're no longer in control of that. We can't take this sentient being and no. force them to die. Quite right, absolutely. You can't. But it's it's this bridge scene is the best scene in the in the episode, the best part of the episode where he is fighting for his life and seeing how. And he's pleading to everyone on the bridge so, to hey, not let it happen. Hey, before that, so he comes out of Janeway's office and it's almost like Janeway has basically already been on the comms badge to everyone going, just let you know, 
<laughs> like so this happens so yeah. when hr are going to fire someone a department head hears then they go off the hr meeting and that manager basically then messages everyone on teams and goes look it's really shitty but this person's going to come out in a very bad mood because we're letting them that they've been made redundant or they've been fired because they're shit they're not going to meet their six month um period or whatever it is mm -hmm. they're going to come out not very happy okay and it's almost like Janeway's done that. It's like she calls him in for the meeting, and then he comes out, and straight away, all the bridge crew are just looking at him. And this is when we get to the Ents, I'll call it down as Ents and Ricky, but I'm pretty sure it is Lieutenant Hogan in this point. Yeah. And he turns and he looks at Chakate and says, basically with his eyes, do you want me to let him have the security console? Yeah. As like, bear in mind, we've just been told the for the character. past two weeks. Yeah. He's going to, he's been working it. So why are you being like this now unless you know he's just been told he's going to be executed? Yeah. And then he hams it up so much and does the full on <sighs> eye roll and then walks off. It's like, why have you just done that? Yeah. And then, you know, and really Chicote and Paris are both there. And yeah, like you're saying, they clearly know. That Everyone seems to know that the answer is Janeway's just said, I'm terminating you. <laughs> and what a character moment this is for him too where he's actually saying i forgive all of you for this don't feel guilty for this he's better than i would have been <laughs> i would have gone kicking and fucking i'm surprised screaming. he's in like straight to tactical and basically lock everything out transport him somewhere to safety it's like -da -da see ya that's kind of what I thought he was going to do. I completely forgot that it didn't happen. That's kind of what I thought he was I going to do. I thought he was going to like run right. And I know they had security right away. He goes to the door to try and run out of the bridge, doesn't he? And security standing there yeah. and manhandle him. But it just... I think it's what, what the issue is. And I think Voyager... This happens quite a lot with Voyager because we saw it in Threshold as well. Yeah. They've got a brilliant story and it goes really well. And then they realise we've got literally 10 minutes to sum this story up yeah and suddenly it's all a rush yeah so yeah suddenly he gets told you're gonna die he has this huge emotional plea which is fantastic you're right scene. it is genuinely moving yeah but then he's straight down in the doctors and they're like yeah this is happening doctor then says i can't do this it's, it's against my oath basically as a doctor oh, which is bang on yeah but guess who randomly knows how to do all of the magic Jane Wade does. Jane Wade knows how to do it. Yeah, why was she doing it in the first place? So I had a little bit of an issue with the scene between those two when they're walking him to the doctor. Yeah. Security team either side of him, she's walking in front of him. That yes. seems like a fucking stupid thing for her to be doing. For someone that she's basically taking to death row. Yeah, who could at any minute just um, Vulcan death grip her. And his security, so I'm guessing he may have one of those little tidy tidy phases on him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He could easily beat all three of them up. Oh god, yeah. And, and they're not in. They're not holding. I know he's going quietly, but he could change his mind at any point. At any point. Um, oh, also right. The doctor knows what's what. <laughs> he does I know what's exactly what. what I was putting there. Well, that was a note. Um, now, so the fix oh, for this... Oh, oh, oh uh, as oh, well, oh, 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 there's oh. a continuity error. Oh. So the two beds that are there, there's an orange thing on the bed. Oh, it doesn't Instantly move. disappears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh -oh. just want to put that on there. Anyone who watched that scene, there's an orange thing on the bed, just vanishes. So the science behind the fix is basically they're going to do what we do now, which is a barium meal, basically. Yeah. Or barium, whatever the pronunciation is. So in current current generation in real life you drink or you have barium injected mm -hmm. and when you go for an x-ray it shows up where it is yeah. and it's a it's a uh it's a contrast dye for radio um radio uh, radiation kind of scans so yeah you inject it and then you can see around the bottom. brilliant yes yeah, that snap um and what they've come up with is a new isotope that they will be able to separate between the two bodies and they yep. can teleport it out Trek nonsense. It is Trek nonsense. So I've got, oh shit, we didn't test the isotope on a human-esque person because they've only tested it on a plant, remember? Yeah. And they've split the plant, not anything else. Anaphylaxis. Oh shit, we've just killed two bits <laughs> and we've lost both people. Yeah, but we've got a really nice orchid. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the orchid back. Yay! <laughs> Yay! In memorial of Tuvok. <laughs> Who's 
job do you think it would be to water it? Would it be in the captain's cabin or would they stick it Janeway. somewhere? Janeway, we'd have to left it in Janeway's Ten quarters. forward. Oh, that's yeah. been knocked over at another rowdy party. <laughs> and you know what, people are carrying it around. It, get, it has to have a shift <laughs> on tactical. <laughs> that's on the security station. <laughs> I love it. Orchid shields, orchid shields. Oh no! Orchid, what have you done? Why have you fired a full spin of photo on torpedoes? Who's arming the torpedoes? Orchid, stop it! Oh no! The the, the book. Yes, it's the it's the orchid. <laughs> <laughs> you will be assimilated. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like weed from Bill and Ben, wouldn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh kid. <laughs> right, anyway, okay. I'm actually crying. <laughs> so they've been separated. I I have a point here. Should one of them be naked? <laughs> well yes. <laughs> well they probably should both be naked, but <laughs> You no, know, they should both be naked because if you think about it, you are it, actually crying. I know, so it's wonderful. A Borg orchid, <laughs> but no, it's true though. If you think about it, unless Tuvix never changed clothes because the clothes he is in was part of his body, yeah, where have these clothes come from? Unless the doctor's gone. Oh, we'll just add a little bit of programming here. Make sure they're not stock bollock naked when they rematerialize as individuals. Yeah. They should be naked. Or they should be have half clothes each. One has a top half, one has a bottom. <laughs> you know, if you're going to merge clothes together, then surely you unmerge them when you separate them. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Why are they suddenly in uniform? Um, <laughs> I've got, oh, boo, Jane, why, why couldn't you beam Neelix in space by mistake? <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then who arrests Janeway for murder? Oh, actually, she looks pretty bummed. We better let her off. Yeah. And I've, I've ended it with grief slash regret. I think I'm kind of making a point of her her face at the end of it. Yeah, you can see it's absolutely cut her. Yeah. And you can, as much as she's stoic, you get the idea that this was a horrible decision to make. But you don't kind of feel like it was too much of a decision. It's really, it's hard to put into words. I just kind of feel like it was too easy a yeah. decision. Um, part of that was obviously the time limit of the episode. Yep. And as I said, they rush it at the end. They tend to do that a lot with the Voyager episodes. It gets rushed at the end, so you don't get necessarily a satisfying conclusion um and i was just saying here can you imagine the captain's lock for this episode it would end up in the hague yeah well this is it she does some questionable things on her time as captain you see you know the federation's going to have a court, court of human rights uh it will be the court of alien rights at this point and it's just like yeah. so janeway well done you you bought your crew on the most part back from the delta quadrant well done we've gone through your logs now we've got some questions for you well you know she makes admiral so they clearly don't give a fuck apparently what what happens in the delta quadrant stays in the delta quadrant (laughs) yeah different postcodes (laughs) (laughs) different star dates (laughs) god starfleet is shit sometimes Accessing USS Shitshow crew member log files. Please select required crew member. Ensign Court selected, commencing playback. Ensign's log, stardate 26239.4. The captain's assigned me a very special mission. Find out where the moisture goes from holodeck simulations. I did ask engineering, but they told me to piss off. Guess I'm on my own with this one. Uh, Uh, That's it, wow. It's a solid episode. I do like it as an episode. I don't like Tuvix, but I don't know if I dislike him enough versus Neelix. Would I have liked... Okay, let me put it this way. Would you have liked Tuvix to have carried on as a character if they'd chosen not to kill him and bring back the other two? If they'd made him less lechy. Probably not possible in Star Trek. Then the thing is, I, <laughs> I actually do like Tuvok. 
Oh, fair. Yeah, and, but that, so, you see, that that's what you've got to accept, isn't it? You've either got to accept that they're going to do what would be right and let two Vicks live, mm-hmm. but then put up with losing two characters, one of which we like, or do what basically humanity says you shouldn't do, but bring back the one character that you do like. What What do you think? was the correct decision what do I you don't, think that was the correct decision the correct decision would have been let him live i agree it's yes you've lost the other two but they are dead at this point they don't exist it's not an accident in the same way as threshold where paris is turning into this other creature no that's different. he had no he's still himself he had no choice about it and he's still paris yeah whereas tuvok and tuvok and neelix didn't have the choice correct but they are not themselves. They are not present. They're not going, today I'm two, two Vox. Oh, by the way, but Neelix is still here. It is, I am one. I am two Vix. Yeah. So he is his own independent, sentient being. Yeah. It was the wrong choice. Agreed. Um, but as I said, what happens in the Delta Quadrant stays in the Delta Quadrant. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, I don't know why I've written this. Imagine being able to spawn in unlimited characters you don't like in Elite Force. Who would you kill the most? Just because I know Elite Force basically carried on from kind of the Voyager era, and then I, I know it ended up in Enterprise. Neelix. I find him really annoying. I would probably be spawning in Neelix nonstop. Maybe Kez every now and then. Yeah. Setting up a scene where Neelix is running towards Kez and having a go at the sniper rifle. Can I stop him before he gets to her? That sort of thing. Kez, though, it's not that I don't like her character. I did. I think I didn't like the situations and episodes they put her character in. I, that's what I didn't like. The character should have been good. She was poorly written for. And then they... Did they when, when she's not in it anymore, it's because she wanted to leave. Is it because she wanted to leave or did they wrote her out? With Omega, they do that fucked up stuff with her, don't they? Which becomes some kind of god or basically, something. Basically, they, oh, they, they basically say her race has never got to this age. Normally, the caretaker or whoever it was that was looking after her race eliminates them before they ever get to that point. Or they have a suicide booth, don't they? Or something like yeah, that, isn't it? And actually, if they get past that point... They then move on to the next stage of their own evolution, which is glowing light that shoots out the side of Voyager without ripping a giant hole, sitting everyone into space. That would have been a brilliant episode. Yeah, bye, Kes. Boom. See, now he's saying that. I wonder if there's a an episode in Discovery with a kind of being that's like uh, a nebula. And I wonder if that's kind of what they are, kind of thinking. Yeah, very true. But then again, I'm still waiting for Discovery to just jump the shark fully and have a Q individual turn up. They haven't got those in Discovery, I don't think, yeah. Yet. Yet. (laughs) But that's one of my... um, There's a brilliant thing. There's um, a meme that's been going around. And you've got... When Picard met Q, he put him on trial. When Janeway met Q, he put him on trial. When Captain Sisko met Q, he punched him. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a, it's so, very, very true. Um, so well, you enjoyed the episode. I did enjoy the episode, yeah. I think it was a good episode for what it was. It wasn't the best of the Voyager episodes by far, but it was definitely nowhere near the worst episode. Um, I was just having a look at the trivia to see if there was any good trivia on the episode and there really isn't it's just saying about how um, Tom Wright basically knew both the actors Mm -hmm. Um, apparently it was had a much more comical tone and slapstick elements Um, they decided later that the premise though somewhat hokey deserved a more serious and philosophical approach yeah I think so (laughs) and they made the right call hey Tuvix guess what you're dead (laughs) (laughs) yeah Um, (laughs) then something about Dirty Harry and the piece of music he's practicing which we don't care about apparently Ethan Phillips the actor that played Neelix was considered to play Tuvix but apparently the um Director Cliff Bowl decided against seriously pursuing the possibility, feeling Phillips as Neelix was too identifiable. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is true, because as soon as you stick him in, it's going to be like, well, it's just Neelix, and they've blacked him up. I would have made Tuvok's character be the act. If I was going to pick one of them, I would have had Tuvok's person do it, but made him act like Neelix. That's how I would have done it. Agreed. Uh, apparently, this is the first time we see the science laboratory on Voyager. Oh, is it? 
Um, like, I, I wrote that actually. I wrote a note saying how good the set was. Yeah, it's a really good Wicked set. set. Um, and there you go. The science laboratory on Voyager is seen for the first time, and the episode marks the first time Neelix is seen wearing a Starfleet uniform. He is also seen donning the gold. Un- oh, that's other episodes. Oh, now this is interesting. Mm-hmm. This takes place in twenty three seventy two. Right. Okay. So now we have a year. So let's come back to my list of things that we've got here. And we now need to find Star Trek First Contract 2373. Okay. So it's a year later. But so they're in their they're first still year in the Delta, in the Delta Quadrant. Quadrant. Yeah. So they were in their first year of Delta Quadrant because each season was a year of them in Delta Quadrant, wasn't it, basically? So technically the EMH in First Contact should be how the EMH So it should have no emotion. Begin- it should, should just yeah. be purely yeah. up his own arse. So it must have just been a decision acting made choice. For, the, for the role. And to be fair, it's probably quite hard for him because he's been told you've got to play the EMH, play it as you would on Voyager, and Voyager's just suddenly done this storyline of giving him sentience and his yeah. own autonomy for all we know the director of first contact didn't know that no possibly i was gonna say the actors probably don't even really know the fucking star dates and all that of course they don't i I doubt any of them really ever worked it out you never know though anyway command functions are offline the next star trek episode then yep we've got another skit inbound at some point, I At believe. At some point, yeah. And then the next one I would like you to watch is The Next Generation. Okay. And I can't remember what it was. <laughs> the episode name is Rascals. 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 And it is episode number six of... Uh, no, episode seven of series six. So series six, episode, episode seven. seven. And it's called six, Rascals. Seven. And... I don't know it off the top of my head. It's... It's a crap one. Okay. But I want you to watch it because there's so many things that I would happily talk about in it. So, yeah. Episode six, uh, episode 7, Series 6, Rascals of the Next Generation. If you want to watch it before us, watch it and then come back and listen to us talk about it. Wicked. In it, bruv. In it, bruv. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, as always. For Thank you. Thank you. And... Sorry we missed the actual release last time. Never mind. We're back. Hello. <laughs> it's the end of the episode. We're back. Welcome. Um, where can they find us? They can find us everywhere. But if you head over to channel84.co.uk, you can find all our social links on there, including the invitation to our Discord server, where you can talk to us in person most days, actually. Um, otherwise, you can find us on Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of them, and we're either at Channel 84 of some variety or at Flat Rob. You can also email us on podcast at channel84.co.uk or, sorry, podcasts at channel84.co.uk, tj at channel84.co.uk or rob at channel84.co.uk. Podcasts comes to both of us. TJ and Rob obviously goes to the person that you want it to go to um and that's it really that's yeah. where you can find us still send me your files your logs your hot takes your screams your alien noises your anything star trek if you want to be in a shit show episode if you like them send me an audio file i'll put you in definitely and then also send us an audio file if you've got as as rob said your own hot takes if you watch rascals and you want to send us a voice clip of your opinion on it, send it Absolutely. to us. We will stick your messages in and we'll talk about your messages. So send them in to us. Wicked. Cool. We will see you in two weeks for Untitled with Trek Show or next week for the normal variety show. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Channel 84 Untitled Trek Show. This station is now shutting down and we'll be back in two weeks. Excelsior.